Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Perhaps you've seen going around on YouTube and the internet and stuff, the sort of this latest craze with copper laminate blades, whether it be like a Gomai, which is a five layer laminate blade, or even copper Damascus, where you have layers of copper in between steel in your blade. It's kind of the new thing. I really have not been interested in making a copper laminate blade where you have sort of the, it's, it's cool, you know, you have the line of copper around it. A lot of other guys have done it and it turns out cool. It's just not really, I don't know, it didn't really seem too interesting to me to, to actually go do it. But I was watching some videos by Aaron over at Ailey Knives on YouTube, and he's been doing a few different things, among other guys, but he's been doing a few different things with uh, this copper laminate idea, and it kind of got an I, you know, my creative juice is flowing a little bit, I guess. And I came up with an idea that I have not seen anybody else try yet. So that is what we're gonna do today. And it's not sand my or go my or laminate, but I think it might work. All right guys, here's the plan. We're gonna take a can or a canister. We're gonna fill it up with this and this and maybe some copper wire to create kind of a pattern and weld it all together. All right, I've got this uh, welded on. Shouldn't come off of there. I'm gonna go ahead and clean up the inside of the can with some uh, acetone. And um, I'm gonna use uh, I'm gonna use some uh, whiteout. Well, it's not actually whiteout. It's uh, it's the knockoff brand dollar store version. It's called something like Correction Fluid. Yeah. Kind of like when you grow up poor and you don't get the brand name stuff, you know, instead of wheat thins, you get brown salty squares, you know, stuff like that. It's actually a Tim Hawkins joke, so credit where credit's due. Now the active ingredient in here is titanium dioxide, that's what's going to keep the uh, contents of the can from welding to the can itself. And this doesn't actually say that it has titanium dioxide in it, so I'm really hoping that it does. I don't know what else it would be. I think, I think that's pretty standard. That's what they all have. I guess we'll find out if it's not and we'll be grinding a bunch of can off. Okay, so while our knockoff whiteout is drying, I'm gonna prep this and I need about, I wanna say five pieces, maybe something like that, three and a half inches long to fit inside our can. Had to put this in the uh, toaster oven a little bit to warm it up and get this to dry. It was kind of freezing, I think. So now it's kind of cracking away from the size of the steel. So hopefully it doesn't just fail us and uh, <coughs> not provide that barrier. First thing I'm gonna do is put in some uh, powdered steel in the bottom. And this is 1095 kind of give this a spot to bed, if you will. Probably better put my respirator on here. So I had some in there, some powder steel in there, and there's some flakes of this whiteout stuff coming off into the steel. And the last thing I want to do is have little flakes of that inside of my steel, where it's going to potentially, potentially create inclusions and stuff. So, um, that sucks, I'm gonna dump this out. I'm gonna go ahead and get my stainless steel foil and, and create a barrier in there. I don't know if this uh, knockoff stuff is just not gonna work, 
but I don't want it contaminating my powdered steel in there. packed in there tightly enough to contain the copper even if it does go molten which I don't know for sure if it will it's likely I don't really know how hot my forge runs um, I feel kind of bad that I don't know that but it obviously runs hot enough to do forge welding consistently and well I don't run it hot enough to get the dragon's breath or where you start seeing sparks a couple of sparks coming off the steel I don't I don't forge weld that hot not necessary to just uh, ruin your steel so we're not getting that hot of course that's a uh, that's not saying much so um, I haven't seen anything running out of the billet yet so we'll just see what happens when we start squishing it here in a few minutes Presumably steel and copper. So I'm gonna let this cool down a little bit. Start peeling off the can and see what happens. Okay, well, what do we have here? We've got a, a billet, it seems solid enough, although we've got some pretty bad crack type stuff here. The next step that I intend to do, intended to do, was to slice it up into pieces um, at about a 30 degree angle or something like that, and then stick those end to end and uh, weld them together to create a mosaic pattern. Um, piece of steel. This all kind of has like a uh, color to it, which I can't tell if that's just, just like normal oxidization colors or if maybe my copper is sort of diffused through the entire, um, you know, chunk of powdered steel here before it was welded together. I don't know. I, um, I soaked it at probably like 10 to 20 minutes at welding temperature before squishing it and then I did three welding passes so um, that maybe that's not a good procedure for this I don't know what I'm gonna do I think next is just kinda grind on the end here and see what presents itself Where did the copper go? I went, I cleaned it up on a 
belt grinder a touch and aside from some of these really nasty cracks and stuff where I guess that's where the copper was I guess it's safe to say that we got up to melting temperature of copper holy moly it's like there's no copper I guess it's all on the outside here I don't know um, <laughs> that's not what I was hoping would happen at all as you probably are figuring out by now I guess the only other thing to do at this point is stick it in some ferric chloride and see if there's any it doesn't look like there's anything visible at all well I think it's safe to say also that um, the powdered steel was not adequate to keep that obviously molten copper contained and there's a, obviously a bunch of little cracks and inclusions and stuff in there but aside from that it appears we've essentially created um, a copper steel alloy or if not technically an alloy then at least a uh, what would it be it's like it's like brazing or welding on a micro level so it looks kind of like an alloy I, I don't I don't know technically you probably can't alloy steel and copper so yeah it, it apparently the copper is just diffused throughout the powdered steel pretty evenly question now is can we yeah that's about right question now is can we make anything out of this at all I'll have to think about that for a minute. All right, so what have we learned so far? Uh, well, we've learned that the powdered steel does not contain the molten copper. We've learned how to make some kind of coppery steel, which I don't know the correct chemical terminology for that is. Maybe somebody who knows more about chemistry can enlighten me. And so I, I still think this would work. And actually what I should have done probably is I should have used my kiln, dial it into like, I don't know, 1750 or something like that and presumably have kept the copper below melting point but got the whole thing hot enough to forge weld um, and you know it, it might have worked at this point i don't have very high hopes for what we can do with this uh, there's just so many little hairline cracks and stuff running through it Hey, guess what I found? Just a little further underneath the surface here, uh, somehow or another, look at that. A heavy concentration of copper. But anyway, as you can see, it melted and diffused enough to where there's no, no pattern whatsoever. And um, I, think, uh, I think this is about the end of our experiment here. In the right circles, I could probably sell this for a lot of money as, like, art, you know. Anybody want it? Well, guys, thanks for coming along on that total failure. I still think you could get it to work with proper temperature control. And I don't know that I'm so excited about getting copper in a knife blade as to, you know, try it all over again and put it in the kiln this time and control that temperature. I don't know. We'll see. But I appreciate you guys watching. And as always, we will see you on the next video. It won't be copper.